you'll have to come down on here too. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to hook my patient up. Um, we've got her intubated and um, we've got her hooked up to the pulse ox temporarily. Um, but to show you the mo monitoring parameters, um, I've got her into our cardell. So the first thing I always want to do is hook them up to a pulse ox. Um, this is going to show her oxygenation and her pulse rate. She's a dental, so the pulse ox, the temporary pulse ox is on her tongue, but we're going to actually stick the one that I'm going to use for the whole procedure on her vulva. So that's the one I usually get started first. Next we get an EKG on. And this is going to show the electrical activity of the heart. And these leads actually will tell you um, what goes on what arm. So I've got my pulse ox going. We already know she's at 100% oxygenation, which is good. Um, um, EKGs, the leads tell you where they go, but um, most people know them by white is right. So that's just going to stick right um, proximal to the elbow. And then smoke over fire. So this is going to go on the same on the left arm. And then your red, which is the fire, will go on the left leg. So we put them on. And then we're going to put alcohol to make sure there's good contact between the clamps and the skin. Sometimes you can readjust them. Um, this cardell tends to double count if you're up against any body wall. Um, so if it's doing funky things like that, they just may need to be adjusted or sometimes they just need a second to read. Um, so there we go. We're getting normal electrical activity there. We're going to do the thermometer probe, which is going to be rectal. Put some lube on it. And we're just going to stick this on her rectum, and then we're just going to gently advance that, which she didn't appreciate, but you can tell by her heart rate increasing. <laughs> Alright, and the temperature probe will take a second to kind of adjust, so don't expect necessarily for it to go straight up to a normal, normal temperature reading. And right now we're getting great numbers. So next we do the blood pressure cuff. So we're going to put, um, most of them are labeled this side to patient, they tell you. So you want this side up. The tubing needs to come over the cephalic vein. This one might be a little big for her. So we'll try it and we'll press our blood pressure button. She's still a little light, as you can tell, from her heart rate being messed with. So that while that's reading, we'll see what it tells us and see if we need to go down a size in our cuff, which we might need to. So I got a normal blood pressure reading. Um, a mean arterial pressure of 86 is normal. I'm going to try a smaller one because I just think that the wrap is just too long. So we'll try this and get this adjusted. You wanna, it's worth taking the time to get this adjusted first to make sure it's correct rather than be in the middle of a procedure or question your blood pressure um, while an emergency might be going on. So I just switched it out and we'll see what that reading gives us. That felt like it was a better, um, it wrapped around three quarters of the cuff. Her temp has equaled out, so that's a great temp for her. She is a small dog. We have a towel to put over her during the procedure, during the anesthesia. All right, so we're getting great blood pressure results. I'm going to leave the two on her. I think that's a better fit for her. Um, and then we'll go ahead with the procedure.